What's up guys, Van here from McMovie Farms and welcome to part 2 of this light related video series. Just to recap, this is a 4 part video series which will consist of the following videos. In part 1 I'll cover the novice basics and what you need to know. In part 2 the novice DIY where there's actually building involved, it would be this video. Part 3 the advanced basics and what you need to know. Part 4 the advanced DIY where there's actually building involved. Part 3 and 4 is aimed for people who are novice who want to become advanced or advanced people who just want to up their knowledge about building their own LED lights. Okay, so before I start, this is what I'll be showing you how to build. It's a light meant for a 2 feet tank. You can also build the simpler version if you have racks like these, but more on that later. Before you continue, it's imperative that you watch part 1. You can find part 1 if you click on the top right corner of your screen. Now let's look at the globes we're going to use. I prefer the Philips 6500 Kelvin 9 watt LED light. You can buy these at Macro, but a lot of other stores also have them. Just note that these lights are not meant to be taken apart and you'll void your warranty if you do so. So what you do is you take a flat sharp item and stick it between the cover and the light. Slowly twist your hand until you see it move. Then do the same thing a little further away, going around the light. You will damage the plastic a bit depending on what tool you use, but it won't hinder the light. Just go slow and you'll be okay. All you have to do is break the silicon. You'll also hear hard cracking noises. That's just the silicon coming loose that holds the two parts together. It's very important that you go slowly and not use too much force. Now, I want you to understand that this was the hardest one that I took off out of the 40 that I've taken off. So yours might be a lot easier. Here you can see the silicon that held the cap and the light together. Now that the cap is off, let's look at the other tools you will need. The wood I used is cheap pine wood and you can use these dimensions if you also plan it to do a 2 feet tank. You will need a screwdriver, wire clippers, a tape, mounting brackets for the lights, the lights we just took apart obviously, a very sharp knife, some short screws for the light fittings, longer screws for the wood, a switch to switch the light on and off, some wire, a plug to attach the wire to the wall and lastly a drill bit. If you use these dimensions start by measuring 17 centimeters from the one side as well as from the other side. This will make sure the lights are evenly spread throughout the tank. Next take your wire clippers and your wire and cut a piece of wire big enough to fit between the fittings. Now you just have to strip the wires on each end. The problem with these light fittings is that there is not enough space on the bottom piece of wood to fit the light fitting and the wood. So I just cut the sides of the fitting to make them smaller. If you cut them, just do it slowly because mine cracked off due to me not being patient enough. Next, take the piece of wire that you have cut and stripped previously and add that to the other piece of wire after you have stripped those ends as well. You can then go on to screwing them tight into the light fittings so that they don't come out. Do the same for the other end as well. At this point you don't have to worry which wire is live and which one is not as it will have no effect on the light we are making. Now take the smaller screws and tighten the light fitting onto the piece of wood. Now all you have to do is strip the end of the wire and add a plug of your choice. Make sure the wires are in very tight and that they can't come out easily. Once again, there is no need to worry about which wire is live and which one is not as this will have no effect on this project. To add an on off switch, you need to take your knife and cut between the wires making sure you don't cut the wire itself. Splitting them 4-5cm to five centimeters should be sufficient. Cut the one part off the wire and then split the ends to expose the wire. Add your switch and screw the split ends in tightly. Put the cap back on and test the trigger to make sure it works. Just always make sure the power cable is not plugged into the wall when you work on the switch. If the trigger on off switch is working, go ahead and add the light bulbs to the fittings. 
plug the plug into the wall and switch on the light. You can either stop here and add this to your aquarium rack. If you intend to add it to a separate standing aquascape, you can watch the rest of the video. Let's continue with the full build. The problem with the full build is that the wood that I had in my shed is not broad enough so the light bulb won't fit. I had to make grooves in the wood with a knife so that the light bulb won't touch the wood. I'll show you this at the end of the video. So next, we should measure the wood to see where we need to drill the main piece of wood so that it won't crack when we screw in the side panels of the fixture. Use a thin drill bit so that the screws will still be a tight fit. I measured half a centimeter from the side because my wood is two centimeters thick. Do this from the other side as well. I measured 2.5 centimeters front to back and made a mark so that I know where to drill. I placed a small piece of leftover wood under the main piece of wood so I don't drill into the table. I just drilled the holes. I then flipped the wood, marked the other side and drilled that side as well. I carved a groove into the wood to be a guide for the wire of the light. I also punched two holes as a guide for the screws 2.5 cm from back to front and 1 cm from the side to prevent the wood from splitting when I screw in the screws. And then I added the screws and drilled them into the piece of wood and then into the side panels. I also did the same on the other side. I added the front and back panels of the stand. Here you can see the grooves that I cut to make the bulbs fit that I talked about earlier. Now all that's left to do is to screw in the front and back panels in from the side as well as from the top. If in the end there are gaps between the wood, just unscrew some of the screws and then drill them back in. And here is the semi-final product. It's not the neatest job, but I'll add some wood filler to make it look better. And after the wood filler has dried, I'll add some varnish for the final touch. I have not done so yet because I first want to see what the color scheme of my furniture in my new office would be. I will aquascape these two tanks with ADA Amazonia and some nice plants in a few months time. I will also be making a video of the aquascaping process. Okay, so now for three tips. Tip number one, if your hand looks like this after you have attempted this DIY job, then maybe DIY is not for you. Tip number two, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, so don't be spiteful, rather forgive. And finally, tip number three, remember to laugh because sometimes it does take more than one person to start screwing in a light bulb. And that's it for the second part of this four part video series, looking forward to show you guys how to build one of these. I really hope you guys learned something today and as always, keep it simple.